7 a.m. Now on our Tuesday morning. This morning, there's a new sheriff in town in North Idaho, and he's already making some big decisions this morning. Why he says he will not enforce health mandates. Plus, the House of Representatives is set to vote on a resolution urging Vice President Mike Pence to activate the 25th Amendment. The best way to heal and unify our nation is to hold accountable those who attacked our capital and those who incited that attack. And as many House Democrats say they believe it's necessary to remove the president from office this morning, they might just have the majority to do so. A North Idaho internet provider is blocking Facebook and Twitter from its Wi-Fi service for some customers. They claim that Facebook and Twitter are censoring people, so it plans to block customers from those sites. This morning, what we know so far. And we're looking at rain coming down early on this morning. I'll let you know how long it sticks around and what it means for you as you head out the door. Up with Krim begins now. 701. Now, welcome to Up with Krim. Great to have you with us this morning. Twilight skiing is canceled this weekend at Schweitzer Mountain. Leaders say it's due to an increase in guests verbally abusing the staff. Yeah, the president and CEO of the resort says he made the decision because of a lack of compliance with their mask and safety guidelines. He says after this weekend, they will reassess twilight skiing in the future. And today we're going to be talking to a representative from the resort about their new COVID-19 regulations. That'll be coming up or a little bit later this morning on Up With Cram. Oh man, and I'm a huge fan of Dig. I'm assuming we're talking Dig, but man, what a fan. She is always pumped on snow and always pumped on the fact that skiing and snowboarding is the happy place for so many people. And let's just try to keep it that way, right? Well, if she's pumped on snow, Jeremy. Yeah. I'm sure you've got some good news for her this morning, right? Oh, oh yeah. Wow, I almost just fell over the top of my chair <laughs> because I got so excited and was like, yeah, it's snow. Dana Marie is giving me weird eyes. Um, Dana Marie. No. <laughs> Jeremy, if it's up in the mountains, I am fine. Okay. I think good snow up at Schweitzer or any of the local mountain resorts, loving it. All right, well, here's the deal. It's, it's kind of a unique one. When it comes to this storm, it's one of those ones where if you can, today's your day to get out and ski. When it comes to all that fresh pow, Tomorrow is going to kind of ruin it, and here's the reason why. We've got rain coming down this morning and temperatures hanging out on the warm side of things. For some, that means an inverted snowpack. You get heavier snow on top of a lighter snow. It creates instability and it causes some avalanche concern. That's one thing we are definitely watching out for, but the other arrives overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. So those higher elevations, they're picking up snow. Some ski resorts might pick up close to a foot during the day today. Schweitzer waking up to a fresh half foot of pow this morning. So if you head out, keep your tips up, do some surfing and uh, send us some pictures because I'm going to live vicariously through you while I'm here telling you about this storm. The rain continues to fall throughout the day today. It's going to be a steady stream of that moisture and so expect a soggy one tomorrow morning. That rain comes to an end, but as it does, so the other side of this storm arrives and that's the wind. That wind is going to help keep temperatures mild tomorrow as well. So today and tomorrow we're in the mid 40s, but as we get into the day on Thursday, the sun comes back out. But by then the wind has done its thing in the higher elevations. So Jen, not just an inverted snowpack, but also the possibility for wind loading. So if you want to get out and do some skiing, say even in the backcountry, you got to be cognizant of your surroundings. That's a good reminder, Jeremy. Thank you. It is coming up now on 704. This morning, a North Idaho sheriff is taking a stand against health mandates. Kootenai County Sheriff Robert Norris is on his first month on the job. Nicole Hernandez is joining us live now from the Kootenai County Sheriff's Office. She tells us more about the statement to the public. Hi, Nicole. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Jen. So that new sheriff released his statement yesterday, and in that statement, he said that his plan is not to enforce any mandates like wearing masks like this one here that would potentially help slow the spread of COVID-19. Now, I want to give you a look at exactly what that statement said. He said that it's not law enforcement's job to get between you and your health and your doctor. In part, he wrote, quote, it is my opinion that the facts are becoming clear with COVID-19. Certain risk groups should take extra precautions, but the vast majority of healthy people who contract COVID-19 will experience flu symptoms and recover from the virus, unquote. Norris was sworn into his new role as sheriff on New Year's Day, the same day he gave an interview on Up With Creme. 
In it, he explains that people should have a choice to get the vaccine, but also said this. So, but there certainly are some challenges. Um, this, this virus does impact people, but a vast majority of them will recover. But boy, if you're in an at-risk group, we encourage you to, to evaluate your own risk and stay away from social gatherings and do whatever you need to do to reduce your risk to contract this virus. Now, right now, face coverings are required in North Idaho until January 19th. The Panhandle Health District Board passed that mandate back in November. There are exceptions for kids, people with medical conditions, and some other people. But as for the whole state, there is no statewide mask mandate at this point. Live in Coeur d'Alene, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Coming up on 706 now this morning, we have new updates following last week's riots at the Capitol. Late last night, we learned that Washington Representative Pramila Jayapal has announced she's tested positive for COVID-19. This comes after a lockdown last week during the mob attack at the U.S. Capitol. Last night, she tweeted, Locked down in a secured room at the Capitol where several Republicans not only cruelly refused to wear a mask, but recklessly mocked colleagues and staff who offered them one. House Democrats do say they have the votes they need to impeach okay. President Trump a second time tomorrow. The impeachment resolution argues President Trump gravely endangered the security of the United States during last week's assault at the U.S. Capitol. The best way to heal and unify our nation is to hold accountable those who attacked our Capitol and those who incited that attack. First, the House will vote today on a resolution urging Vice President Mike Pence to activate the 25th Amendment, though he has shown no signs of considering such an action. Inauguration is about one week away, and this morning the FBI is warning of armed protests at all 50 state capitals leading up to Inauguration Day. Leaders say the protests could start later this week and extend through January 20th. The National Guard does plan to increase its presence in the nation's capital. Officials in D.C. also want Americans to stay home during next week's inauguration. Now, President Trump is issuing an emergency declaration for the nation's capital amid that growing concern. The declaration allows the Department of Homeland Security and Federal Emergency Management Agency to coordinate with local authorities. This morning, at least two Capitol Police officers are suspended. This is according to De uh, Democratic Representative Tim Ryan. He serves on the House subcommittee overseeing funding for Capitol Police. Uh, Capitol Police, we talked about before with uh, taking selfies and another uh, another Capitol Police evidently put on a, a MAGA hat. Ryan adds they do not want officers working the inauguration who did not do their job on January 6th. Capitol Police did not immediately reply to a request for more details. Airbnb says it's now banning guests linked to hate groups and violence in D.C. On Monday, the company announced they are reviewing reservations in Washington, D.C.'s area ahead of next week's inauguration. GoFundMe is also reportedly no longer allowing people to fundraise travel expenses to potentially violent political events. Security remained tight overnight in the state capitol. Yesterday, the National Guard and Washington State Patrol protected lawmakers during the first legislative session. Yesterday, they arrested two people. Troopers say one of those people was connected. One of those persons was connected to last week's breach of the governor's mansion. They say he will face additional charges of criminal trespassing. Well, a fire near the Spokane International Airport caused multiple explosions last night. And Spokane Public Schools is getting the support of the City Council for a levy. We'll tell you more about that coming up on Up With Krebs.